Hey, I'm Spider-Man Earth. Welcome to Medieval 2 Total War. And uh, we're playing a normal campaign today. We're going to start up Grand Adventure, the Grand Campaign. Now, there was a few suggestions. I had uh, put up a voting video. If you, if you guys don't know, if you're new to the cam, if you're new to my channel during this campaign or whatever, I do voting videos usually for my main uh, Total War series. So stick around long enough, you'll probably get to vote on something, and uh, that's how it goes. But anyway, I offered the Spanish and a Scotland and Denmark uh, co-op kind of campaign, or a uh, multi-seat. <laughs> Me playing these two nations, hot seat, but. Uh, Actually, Spain and Byzantium got the most votes. So, I'll keep in mind that Byzantium got a lot of votes. However, Spain did get more votes than Byzantium. So, we are going to be playing as Spain today. Make sure to unclick England. That would be bad. We do not want to do that. Uh, I'm going to play on Hard Hard. I'm still not a master of Medieval 2. I've not played it enough. And there's still a lot of mechanics that I'm not super comfortable with. Or, well, I'm comfortable with. I'm just not super good with. And, uh, of course, we'll start with a short, and then if we beat that, we'll go probably about 30 regions, like we do in every kind of Total War campaign. About 30-ish regions. Manage all cities. Do not use show CPU moves on Medieval 2 Total War. Um, it goes really slow. Like, like they, the guys just move really slow. Like, walking speed. It's ridiculous. But, uh, no battle time limit. We want battle time limit because the AI can glitch sometimes in siege scenarios, and you want to be able to win... Without having to just, you know, give up because the AI is glitching out. But other than that, uh, I think that is all we're going to do today. So, or, that's all we're going to do today. Oh, I have the Turks selected. That's not good. We want Spain selected. Just Spain. Alright. But anyway, without further ado, let us jump into the campaign. Spain is a land divided. Enduring the conquest of the Moors for many centuries has left a bitter taste with her people, who fight for liberation in the name of God and King. The Reconquista is fought daily. Years of mistrust and infighting has left Spain directionless. Unfortunately, the Moorish occupation of the Iberian Peninsula is still not enough to unite rival nobles. as dark and seemingly hopeless as these, the survival of the Spanish rests solely on the shoulders of those willing to go above and beyond the call of duty. Pretty teeth. Heroes must rise so that Spain can be free and united once more. So it is written, so it shall be. We caught sight of the army. He was terrified and groaned in his mind. Oh, I gotta blow up another army, he said. <sighs> gotta just dominate another army. Can't they just leave us alone? That's what I said. Alright, so welcome to Spain. Welcome to Medieval 2. I've not played Medieval 2 in a long time. Oh, yeah, that is correct. We cannot uh, just auto-scroll on the campaign map in Medieval 2. Canon Rome. But basically, we start with two settlements in the Iberian Peninsula. Toledo, our castle, and Leon, our large town, I believe. Yes. And, uh, yeah, basically, we don't start with any relations. Nobody does. Uh, they decided in Rome in Medieval 2 that nobody would start with friendly or... Hostile relations with anyone. But basically, <clears throat> we have two rebel settlements over here that are relatively close to us that we can try to take. And that's going to be my first objective, so we're going to go ahead and do yes. that. But first, I'm going to, you know, show off the units of the faction. So let's look at our castle. That's where we can see the most, the best units that we have available. We have castle. So basically, we get uh, 
At Wooden Castle, we get Jeanette and Mailed Knights, as well as at a castle. Let's see what those are. Or, well, we can go through the whole thing. And then Fortress, we get access to Feudal Knights and Dismounted Feudal Knights, which are pretty good. Citadel, we get Shelveric Knights, as well as Dismounted Shelveric Knights. So, let's check it out. Okay, so our Jeanettes are a Missile Cav. They are effective against armor. The Javelins are effective against armor. Uh, they're not too bad. 915 is not too bad. So, they're pretty good, uh, Jav, Jav Cav. Jav Cav. Jav Cav. Jav Cav. So, they're definitely good at that. They're they're not bad units by any stretch of the means. Uh, neither are Feudal Knights. Feudal Knights are kind of the... The cavalry of the line, I guess you could say. Most of... Almost all of the European factions get Feudal Knights. And, uh, they're... You know, they're pretty good. They're decent. They have good morale, good stamina, and they... They do work. So, pretty much standard cavalry. Uh, we also get Shilvetic Knights, which are very good. They're more heavily armored. They have substantially more attack power. As well as better charge. And, um... <clears throat> Very good at shock cavalry. Now, our dismounted feudal knights are going to be pretty good infantry. 1321, which is definitely really good. The 21 is very good. There's not too many infantry. I have over 20 defense. So, dismounted feudal knights are definitely good to get. Dismounted chivalric knights are a little bit better. You know, they only have one more armor. Not too much different between them, but it does mean that we have more guys to train. Uh, because in Medieval 2, uh, basically, you have max available recruitments. And, uh, you know, I'll go over that a little bit more for you, those of you who do not know what is going on. And, uh, we have stables. We can get additional Jeanettes, Mailed Knights, Feudal Knights, and Shilveric Knights here. Nothing else additional than from what we can get from the castle itself. Uh, Barracks, we get Peasants, Javelin Men, Almogvahars, Al Almogvahars, and Sword and Buckler Men. So, start off with Peasants, you know, three... 4-3 crude, you know, peasants, you don't expect too much out of them. Gentlemen, not too bad uh, line infantry, you know, they have effective against armor with their six missile tag javelins. They can stand and melee a little bit against other levies. I don't know, they're not that great. El Mughalahalavas are a very good javelin. 13 missile tag with the effects against armor. Uh, 13 nines, so they can stand in melee. So basically, our armory is going to be giving us, or our barracks are going to be giving us more uh, skirmish kind of units until we get to the armory level, which will give us sword and buckler men, which are pretty good. 13, 19. But I would rather train the dismounted chivalric and feudal knights. Plus, they look cooler too. I don't know, these guys kind of look weird, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, so our barracks are not too great. But uh, we do have really good cavalry, we have really good skirmish. And speaking of which, we have Peasant Archers, Peasant Crossbows, Pavés Crossbows, and Mounted Crossbows. So we also have very good Archers, you know, your standard Peasant Archers. Five Missile Attack for a Peasant Unit is not too bad, you know, they do work. Peasant Crossbows, uh, effective against armor, of course, because it's a crossbow. Probably not going to be training too many Peasant Crossbows because, uh, you know, the 2-1 hurts. And I'd rather, Peasant Archers are pretty much cheaper. And I do have the Javelinmen with the armor piercing, so I don't really need Crossbow with armor piercing. But Pavés Crossbowmen, on the other hand, are very good. Decent in melee, 614. They have very good defense. You know, they can duel with other range attackers. 12 missile attack with a f with armor piercing is very good. And modern crossbows, eh. I'll probably train the Jeanettes. The Jeanettes are better pretty much at everything. So, mounted crossbow, I'm probably not going to train those just in general. But, uh, let's look at our siege. Standard ballista catapult trebuchet. Uh, Smiths, you know, standard stuff. And that's good. We also get Knights of Santiago is a thing that we could get. I think that is only Spain that allows us to get them. It's a special order. Uh, we'll see if we can get that if we, if we can. And Leon, let's check out our what our city what our city barracks can get. I'm not exactly sure actually. Uh, we start out with javelin men and peasants, which is pretty nice. I are oh no, we start out with town militia. I was <laughs> looking at the castle. <laughs> uh, so we start with town militia. We get spear militia, crossbow militia, swordsman militia, pike militia. And that's it. So, <clears throat> let's see. That, that's a pretty good mix, actually. We get Town Militia, which are basic spearmen. You know, light light spears. Not super great against cavalry, but they do do work. 5-7. And, as you, you know, the javelin men have, like, 7-7. Seven, seven, so they can do good against these militia. As well as having the good range attack. Uh, spear Militia. They have, uh, you know... There's not really too much different between them as far as stats. But they are they do have a bigger anti-cavalry bonus. They also do Schlintrum. Which can be useful. Uh, crossbow militia, of course. Getting crossbowmen in your uh, cities is very nice. It's a good range unit you can get in a city. Usually you can't get range units, so having that is 
Nice. Swordman Militia, very good. 1118 Militia for a town is very good. Uh, but these are later in the game, of course. But these are kind of like the Sword and Buckler men. But available in a city, which means our late game cities will be able to have pretty good infantry to be trained out of them. Uh, the, the thing you will notice with Militia is that they do not have very good morale. And uh, that is the one problem with Militia. They are very low morale, low kind of stamina. But they can have good stats. Uh, Pike Militia, 7. Two, one. So they're going to get torn up by any kind of missile attack, but they will hold against cavalry very well and infantry. They'll hold them off a little bit for our knights to go around and hit them or our javelin to do range attacks. So we'll be pretty useful. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get some buildings underway. I do want to get a mine first off. We do start with a good amount of cash. Investing in mines initially is very helpful. Uh, mines do have very high return on investment, but they do cost a lot initially. And we can also get mines here. So I'll get mines in both our settlements. We still have 5,000 uh, Florens, I believe is what they're called in this game. Florens, Gilder, whatever. Yes. But uh, definitely very helpful to do that, in my opinion. Uh, we're actually going to send Vasco up to Zaragoza. Which looks like... Uh, doesn't look like I can make it in two turns, unfortunately. But we'll go this way. And, uh, basically, I want to go after Zaragoza because Valencia actually has a pretty decent garrison. We'll go send our spy over there, actually. And, uh, if you've, if you know anything about history, El Cid de Conquerer is over here. El Cid de Campirador is garrisoning Valencia, which is historically accurate, actually, for the time period. And, uh, King Alfonso, I believe. Yes, we are, we are King Alfonso. El Cid del Chivaris is there, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I did do El Cid campaign, we do our uh, Age of Empires 2 on, our, on my channel, and we did showcase that a little bit, that little storyline, so we can kind of kind of reliving that. We're kind of kind of right after we left off of there is kind of where we are in history here. And uh, we got princesses. Princesses yes. here, um, what you can do with princesses, they act like diplomats. Diplo diplomats. Diplomats, which means they can go talk to other people. Highness. Which we'll be taking advantage of, of course. Send this guy this way. This guy's going to go up here. I believe there's a Portugal castle right about here that I'll try to talk to Portugal. I want to be friends with Portugal because they're right next to us. They can be very helpful against the Moors. Uh, as long as we can get our hands on these two rebel settlements, I shouldn't have a problem being too friendly with them early. Which will be nice uh, because I will explain a little bit about the diplomacy mechanics that I've learned about. But just know that it is important. Uh, Toledo starts at 62% Catholic. This is 90%. We're going to garrison this guy, our priest, in Toledo, which means we will convert more Catholic people yes. in the settlement in this region, which allows us to relieve uh, happiness penalties from that. Uh, now, you did notice that I raised the tax rate on the city. It was very high. That's because we have, you know, we still have growth. We have good public order. And. Uh, Basically, you cannot lower you cannot lower and raise tax rates in castle. Wow, gee, you cannot raise or lower tax rates in castles. So that's why I did not do that. Uh, I'm gonna hold off. I could train some male knights and genets. I could do that, but I will not. And notice that you do have you can train three units per turn. So you might say saying, oh, you can train three genets. No. Now the thing is, like I said, there are three recruitment. I can recruit up to three genets, but I do not have them all available right away. I have to wait. It says turns until next available unit one. So, interesting enough, the difference between you know the recruitment in Rome and in Medieval Two, basically you can train multiple units per turn, but you run out of reserves and you have to wait for you know them, wait for them to build up. So you can you can get out a large amount, uh, kind of in a bursty fashion, but you can't continually train units as fast as you think you would be able to. So in the long run, um, if you're training units all the time, it'll be about the same speed as Rome, but. Uh, it's a little bit more bursty, which I like, personally, because that's usually how I train units anyway. Uh, we are going to train a merchant here in Lyon, because merchants are very useful. As well as, well, we don't really need to get a diplomat now, uh, because we do have to do princesses, but we do want to marry off our princesses to other lords of uh, different factions. We'll probably just accept random lords that we get, because it's not that big a deal, but uh, we'll end the turn. And, uh, yeah, basically, if you get them married off, they don't... They're not available on the map anymore, so you do have to be careful of that. Anyway, we ended the turn, and there we go. Oh, wow. Um, well, minus one loyalty. Mm. 
You know, I want to keep them a l keep my princesses a little bit longer. And there is a Moorish diplomat. We can talk to them. Actually, we can talk to him, and then we can go over to the other Portugal town over there with this princess. So we'll send this princess straight to the French to talk to them. And there's this castle. Royalty needs its rest, my lord. Yes, lord. Oh, well, they already made it there. Okay, well, <clears throat> well, hopefully the Portuguese will lose, and we can go from there. Um, it's kind of a bad thing to hope for, but, you know, it's one of these things. Uh, we'll do trade rights, and that is... Mm, I, do, mm, I do not want to make an alliance with them, because I do plan to go to war with them. Within a reasonable amount of time, so I do not want to make peace with them. Basically, uh, the point of alliances in this game is it boosts your reputability. If we look at uh, was the diplomacy tab, you can see if you hover over, we have reputation mixed, religion Catholic. Everybody starts out as mixed. Uh, basically, we want to build our reputation up to reliable, up to you know trustworthy. And uh, <clears throat> because that allows us to have better deals with the other factions, it's, uh, the way you do that is you do honorable things to raise your uh, raise your diplomacy. Like uh, the longer you, you like alliances, give you a point towards reliability each turn. Like you get more respectability each turn for having an alliance. Same thing with uh, having or being at war with people that subtracts. So if you have more allies than enemies, then you're going to be going positive. Otherwise, you're going to be going negative and becoming less trustworthy. Uh, breaking alliances is a big penalty. Um, declaring war is a penalty. Receiving a war is not a penalty. So, if you can force other people to declare war on you, kind of sneakily, you won't lose favor in the eyes of the world. But, uh, we actually are going to train some knights. Well, no, it, it does cost a lot of upkeep, so I, I don't want to do that until I'm ready. And hopefully these guys will lose, because it's only 3v4. So we'll sit there Your and wait. Majesty. It's unfortunate. But, uh, but yeah, basically, occupying cities increases it, or keeps it neutral. I, th I think it increases it. Uh, you know, sacking the city is neutral, and then I think exterminating the city is definitely a negative. So see, look at that, look at that. And we got a mission from the Pope, so I'll talk about that in a second when I'm done, you know, doing... Oh, come Dude! Why you gotta be blocking me like this? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> He's gonna make this painful. Um, but construction report complete. We got two mines installed now, which means lots of good things. And I did forget to send our merchant out, which is really dumb of me. Uh, let's go see what we have available. Tin in the nearby area. Uh, ooh, yes, please. Let's go get some of this, this 28 Florence. Usually you want to go far away from your territory. You know, you can get more money, but it's also more dangerous. So early game, I like to just kind of sit by my territory. And I do know. Yes, I do know. So basically, the Pope gives you missions from time to time. He wants us to build a chapel in Toledo. And uh, basically, if you don't follow his missions, you do lose favor with him, which is not good, which means you can get excommunicated. We do start with average favor of the Pope. Uh, only the Holy Roman Empire really starts with negative, or with kind of low. Uh, if you're down to like two or one, the Pope might excommunicate you, which means the other Catholic factions can declare war on you without too much penalty. Uh, basically, warring with other Catholic factions has a lot of penalties the Pope, you know, hates on you. And basically, it, it's kind of like a, a tender alliance between all the Christian factions. I won't say you're actually allied, because that's definitely a lie, but it's it feels, it feels a little better than just... Uh, Shoot. Not I think this is down here, isn't it? We'll find out. <clears throat> but, uh... But yeah, it's kind of interesting how that works. So, again, our goal is going to be taking these rebel settlements and going from there. That's all we're going to do for this turn. Not too much going on in the early turns, of course. Oh, did forget to build something here. Uh, we do want roads for extra... Travel and trade, always beneficial. And I think we're going to start building... Yes, okay. The Portuguese moved. We're going to start building up forces to... Oh my gosh. This is just a pain in the butt. Making this a lot harder than it needs to be. But this guy will definitely be able to handle that. Uh, mission success. 
We don't lose anything. We might have gained a favor. No. But we just didn't lose favor, basically. Uh, fair and rule. Nice. Looks like that guy's going to be coming over here to try to take that. <laughs> He's not going to take that ever. The AI, like, in this game, the AI, you know, over overthinks their, their uh, power a lot. That's probably the one weakness of the AI in this game, definitely. Uh, I could go for port, but we do not have many trade rights up and running at the moment, so yes. it's not going to be super useful. Very well. No further today, my lord. And, uh... I shall approach this delicately. Have do I look like a... Looks like there's a French army coming this way, so hopefully we can, uh, snap up Zaragoza. Hopefully he's moving over here to take this. This is also rebel summon here, I believe. So, hopefully he's doing that and not coming down to Zaragoza, because that could be a problem. But, you never know. And let's see. On my way. The city is not here, but we can talk to this guy who has a very, very nice army. Prince Alfonso. Al Alfonso. It's almost Alfonso. But let's trade rights, alliance. Let's make it happen. Of course, we accept this deal with open arms. And uh, basically, uh, in this game, you can keep track of relations. So, Portugal, we have good relations, which is nice. And like I said before, we have our first alliance, which means our reputation is going to start increasing, which is exactly what we want. And doing, uh, attacking the rebels, being at war with the rebels, does, I don't think it reduces your reliability. I could be wrong. I don't think it does, though. Uh, but basically, we have enough money now that I'm going to start thinking about training some units. Uh, we're actually going to train a diplomat and a priest first. Get some more conversion going. Because we definitely, we want to actually actively kind of try to convert Cordoba by sending our priest down there. And uh, that will, uh, <clears throat> you know, cause a lot of happiness problems, which is what we want to do. But next turn, we'll start training some spear militia. And then we're going to send out some guys here. We'll start training there in a couple turns. And getting ready to attack Valencia, which is a, another castle. We're going to keep this a castle, I think. We're going to keep this a castle. Leon could stay there. Um, I don't think we really need to change that. Uh, yeah. Probably. Yeah, I could probably stay how it is. Because uh, eventually we'll want to take out Pamplona. And we'll want to take out the Portuguese, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, for now... We're going to send this guy down yes, here. He's still going down please. here. Yes. She's done. Okay. So that's all we wanted to do. We got our alliance with Spain. Hello, so if we see Ruca del Valiente up for marriage, we can accept that without too much penalty to our diplomatic speed. Which is always nice, of course. And it looks like the Moors might be coming up for us. Not sure what they're up to exactly. Be pretty impressive. Oh, see? Look at that. Look at that. He is 40, but uh, he has you know, he has pretty high loyalty. You know, I'll, I'll get him. Take Rebel Settlement. They want to take Zaragoza. Well, isn't that perfect? We are going to do that without hesitation, of course. And we can talk to the French. Hey, French, you want some trade rights and alliance? They do. All right. I probably will not make alliances with anyone else immediately until I get to know diplomatic situations of the world. But, uh, we got our diplomat on underway. Our diplomat's gonna be going over to probably to Northern Europe here. And, uh, if we do get a marriage proposal for our other princess, I'll take it, probably. Where did our extra guy show up? He showed up here, okay. Because he's gonna be our leader for this campaign. And we're gonna have super militia. We're gonna start training some knights. And we're start. We're gonna go ham towards there. We should be done with Zaragoza by the time we get our friends mobilized, so we can get some reinforcements there. Portugal likes us, which is awesome. Uh, we also have the priest we can send out, which we will do, of course. Uh, converting territory does increase their uh, religious piety, which does help them get into cardinal offices, which uh, allows you to get more favor of the pope. You know, it's just all kind of a political religious game with that but you don't have to worry about that too much if you don't want to you can just play it like a total warrior and as you can see we already got up to six haha <laughs> don't know how exactly but uh basically all the christian nations start with a start with a dude in here and uh later in the game you know we'll get more hopefully but for now we're not gonna worry about it too much dirt roads finished in toledo i don't really want a mustering hall could get a boyer i think that wouldn't be too bad we do want more growth rate, too, because uh, 4,500 is where our next 
castle upgrade is going to be. So the faster we can get there, the better units we can train. And we already get mailed knights, which is pretty good. It's going to carry us in the early game. Pretty nice. The early night, the mailed knights will definitely do work. And as you can see, our rankings, we are not so good on anything. France is the military leader, so hopefully they decide to be nice. They are allies, and if they break the alliance, they will lose reputability. So <clears throat> there's a little little hope that uh, we can do that. Amiable, I think, is the step right above neutral. If I recall, relations reasonable, admiable, amiable, I think, is a little bit above reasonable. And uh, we are very good with them, which is nice. So, relations is a good way to tell if somebody's going to declare war on you. You know, the AI does do sneaky tactics sometimes, so it's not a guaranteed indicator of whether they're going to declare war, of course. But you still have to be careful. But it does help, you know. And Cordoba here is a nice target. It's a nice, pretty nice settlement to take, as well as Granada, of course. But, uh,. After we take our rebel summons and we start gearing towards the war with the Moors, I'm going to try to see if I can get some, get a crusade going, because that'll help us indefinitely against the Moors. And I'm not sure what they're doing exactly. Maybe they are going for this. I will watch them, because I definitely have enough defense to be able to fight them off. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I'm going to build two more guys here. We're going to send the majority of these guys out. All but one of these spears. Now, <clears throat> one thing you do notice here is that these guys have blue unit cards. These guys have gray. If you look at towns, now this doesn't apply to castles, only towns. Your walls actually have a number of free upkeep units, which means units that you can train from here will have free upkeep. So, like we have the spear militia and town militia, and uh, basically you don't have to pay upkeep on these three units that are. Uh, so that's that's quite a bit of savings actually. So it's always good to have your max number. You you want to max that out. Because otherwise you're losing efficiency. I mean, you, you could have more troops for free, basically. Which is... It's, I, I like it. It's pretty cool. Pretty much guarantees that you have garrison. But like I said, we are going to send these guys out. We'll have... Well, we're training two more guys, so we'll pop them in there next turn. It'll be a little bit... A little period of inefficiency, but it's not too inefficient. And I'm not too worried about people attacking us there. For better or for worse. We'll see if that's... Oh! You know, if they're going for there, that's actually kind of a problem. Hopefully, they don't get it. That that could that could legitimately be pretty disastrous. Because uh, we do want as much territory early as we can without declaring war. But not too worried about it. All right, so Zaragoza has got three more turns. Not too worried about that. Sending these guys over. We'll have we have a lot of force here that we can move out. We'll train three more mailed knights because YOLO. <laughs> we don't. Re we really don't need that many mailed knights, but I just want to overpower, and uh, hopefully our economy will stay good. Nope, France is gonna chill by Zerigo, so they'll see that we take it, and they'll either declare war on us or they will leave. They has a little bit more reasonable in medieval two than it is in Rome, which is good. I like that. But uh, we're going to watch, see what they're doing. Yep, I was right. They are going down here. They're gathering their forces. Looks like he tried and lost, which is good. It's good for us because that means the Moors are losing strength as well as the Rebel Settlement. It's just benefits. Just benefits, benefits, benefits. Uh, now, we are going to focus here a little bit. We do have discount here, which is actually pretty nice. Actually, there's not really something that we... We don't really need any of that right now. I think a port would actually be pretty good because we do... Let's see, where is this? You know, the port comes out here, okay. Okay, so we do have trade with them. Most of these settlements are actually rebels on this coast. So if we can talk to England, maybe we can get some trade with England with that port. Otherwise, that port's not actually doing too much. But for now, let's get Jekom de Rocco Jungle. That's not his name, but uh, we're going to leave these guys here. We're going to go out with this much of force. This, this force is more than enough to defend a castle. Castles are very easy to defend. And we should be able to go over to Valencia, no problem. And just hope that France does not decide to be a douche and attack us there. So long-term goals. Uh, let's see. Let's let's plan a little bit. Basically, <clears throat> uh, this territory. If you're wondering, there's no island. There's no Palma here like there is in Rome. It is belonging to Valencia. It's the same territory. But um, basically, we want to wage holy wars on the Moors. 
you know, kind of expand down here, get our territory going. If Portugal decides to declare war on us, we will easily grab that, you know, we'll nab that up. We'll keep our borders, you know, somewhat strong. We won't uh, become undefended, of course, but they might sneak attack us, take Leon or something, but we can counterattack. We should have more land than them, ideally. If we take Zaragoza as well as taking Valencia, we'll have more land, double their land. They start with the same amount of land as us. And um, <clears throat> this is going to be our early goal. Our diplomat princess is still moving out. And there's another French city. France is pretty strong early. But they have a lot of people that don't really like them. You know, a lot of neighbors. Which is not always good. And I think that's all we're going to do for this turn. So let's save. Now, the thing with merchants is that they don't have any upkeep. Unlike other agents. Uh, but they cost 500 to train. So as long as you get 500, you know, Florence out of them, you have paid it back. And anything else is beneficial bonuses. So, and you can get, you can get one merchant per market that you own in your, in your, uh, <clears throat> civilization. So keep that in mind. And France is not sure what they're doing exactly. But it's not too concerning. I'm not too concerned. Um, looks like the Moors are losing some more. <laughs> <laughs> but not to concern about that like I said Venice actually has the highest um, military interesting. and our relations improved with France which means hopefully they don't attack us not saying we would lose that battle we might actually be able to win it I wouldn't want to try let's talk to this Rossi do you like trade rights very well uh, I could make an alliance. See, with Milan and Venice, they're very warlike, generally speaking. So making alliances with them will often get you to break alliances. And I'd rather just have, I'd rather be allies with Portugal and France and keep those alliances strong. I think that's going to be more beneficial in the long run. Uh, they did get injured a little bit, not too much. Keep our guys moving this way. Be able to reach their next turn. And it'll take seven turns, unfortunately, but that is the price you have to pay. If you don't want to waste men, which we do not. Let's look at our financial tab. We are actually losing money a little bit, but it's not too concerning. Um, I think we are going to grab the market for a little bit more money. Just in general. And we'll probably have to fight our first battle here. And then that'll probably be the end of the, our first episode. But... Uh, Things are going good. And see, we dropped down again. Sicily is actually the highest right now. Pope's pretty uh, <clears throat> erratic when it comes to things. So Keep that man. We're at 75%. We're pretty close to the point where I want to send this guy offensively. Actually, we could send him offensively right now. And it's because you can see this is 27% Catholic. So converting that will be very annoying for them. Plus, he acts as kind of like a spy. He doesn't have very good vision range, but he'll be able to keep eyes on the city for us. He'll stay here, you know, training up a little bit. Orders? And hopefully that go pretty well for hey, us. Uh, All not to you. Usually, the, it, it's it's interesting actually in this game because uh, the AI is usually pretty willing to get alliances early, so you can pretty much get alliances with anyone you want, as long as you don't declare war on them or you know whatever. So it's it's actually pretty interesting in that regard. I find big difference from Rome. And let's see if the rebels do decide to sally forth. They have! Oh, nice! And we get the French people here to help us. This is perfect. Our allies are here. They wanted they wanted Zaragoza, so they came over and decided, hey, you know what, we'll help us. And uh, I'm not sure if actually fighting with your allies improves your relations, but if it does, boom. Boom. You know, this is just beneficial all around, because we don't have to waste as much men. Uh, we can try to get the rebels to attack the French. Which might be beneficial. We'll see where they spawn and stuff. But hopefully they can attack the French instead of us. Have the French win the battle for us without us taking any casualties would be amazing. That would be the best scenario. But there's no guarantee of that. Uh, we can't order our troops because it is a sally forth. You cannot order your troops during a sally forth. Same thing with them. Same deal. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be like, oh, the defenders randomly decided to come outside the wall. You can't really see. So it's like that. Uh, our allies are over there. Yeah, let's pull back. Pull back a little bit. Try 
Turn off skirmish mode, of course. I do not like skirmish mode in this game. I do believe crossbows have a longer range. Do not want defensive mode. I, th I do think crossbows have a longer range in this game than uh, peasant archers. I'm not super sure about that. Are the French actually just going to sit there or are they going to actually come and help? It looks like they're going to come and help, maybe. Well, they, they actually have some sergeant spearmen, which are pretty good. Which is nice to see. So we can actually retreat over to the French, which I think is beneficial, like I said. Uh, crossbow militia. If they run their militia way ahead of their army, I will not hesitate in sending my general in to crush them, because uh, cavalry is really, really good in this game. I will tell you right now, cavalry is OP as crap. And it it destroys so much. Okay. Alright, we have an opportunity here. We actually have a really good opportunity. Why is the general going... What the heck? Uh, yeah, we'll take it. We'll, we'll just fight him. No point in wasting time. Wasting time. It's, not gonna, it's not gonna take too many casualties on us. We've already killed a big percentage of them. We'll just run into the javelin men here. Our men are under attack. We need to act. What do you think we're doing? Da 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 da. da. And they're routing. Perfect. Oh, uh, actually, I don't. Hmm. I'm not sure why we don't see the banners. I just realized that we don't see. I'm. I'm not seeing the banners. Uh, hold on. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. Uh, da 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 da. Da, 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 UI maybe. Huh. I don't know. That's kind of weird. I just I just realized that we don't see the. Uh... Wise to praise the day before sunset, but our men are winning the battle and forging a worthy victory. Uh, we don't want to find town militia with our general, it's not really useful. But, uh, like I said, I do not see the banners. I just realized that. It's not like the end of the world or anything, it's just... We must act now. I just would rather see the banners, of course, because they are kind of nice. So that you know when people are routing. And where the enemy units are. If you guys know the hockey for that, you can tell me. I'll probably have figured it out anyway, but... The Always appreciate your help. Uh, clear victory. We've only lost nine men, so it wasn't, it wasn't really that bad anyway. <laughs> we, made, we made them run out with their, uh, with their uh, range units first because they're a little bit faster. And uh, just ran them down. That's all there was to it. I mean, they didn't really have much chance anyway. Francis Bacon. We tore them apart, my lord. And Occupy Assignment, giving us a little bit more reliability, hopefully. And mission success, got 2,500 florins from the Council of Nobles, which is always nice. This port has been built. It is not trading. Oh, no, we are trading. All right, good. We are trading initially. That is what we want to see. I think I will get a boy here. Because we can get some more uh, archery. We can actually get some archers going. And Oh, see, look at... He is ready to take this town, but I'm there first. YOLO. Swag. Get wrecked. He, let's check out his army. He's got desert archers, three units of desert archers, spear militias, and does some desert cav. If he wants to try to fight this, he will lose. Definitely. And there are some random uh, rebels over there. Which I don't care about, of course, because they're not even in my territory at the moment. So we're going to garrison him in here. We're going to send this guy over here. We're going to start trolling and converting to Catholic. Because that is always going to do. And I can kind of count on Portugal to help with that, too. Because uh, they're probably it's probably in their best interest to do that as well. It is possible that they will just directly attack us here, and we do have to do that. We do have to watch out for that, and we can't upgrade this to a large town immediately, which is awesome. Very awesome indeed. But uh, I think that's all we're gonna do for this episode of Medieval 2 Total War as the Spanish. So thanks for watching so much, and join us next time. As uh, we try to take Valencia, hopefully the French don't attack us, and uh, we'll start our little kingdom of Spain. Thanks so much for watching.
Red Lord signing out. Have a good day.